All right, welcome to the SVG coordinate system section. We are going to conquer viewports, the view box, and general coordinate systems. We are going to finally look at how to make our SVGs responsive, and then I'll give you a couple of areas for further study. Let's dive right in. The SVG canvas is the space where your SVG is going to get rendered and it's conceptually infinite for each dimension. So width and height are unlimited. Now, we do need a finite rectangular region of that canvas to actually view our SVG, and that is the viewport. That's the viewing area that the user actually sees the content. Now, the viewport can be established explicitly by providing a width and height attribute on the root SVG element. So it looks something like this. You could have a width equals 100, height equals 100, and again, if length units are not specified, pixels will be assumed, and also a reminder that all of these length units are available to you. So you can provide percentages. So you might think width equals 100%, height equals 100% would be a good way to go to make it responsive, but section 7.12 of the spec says percentage values do not provide an intrinsic width or height and do not indicate a percentage of the containing block so we'll have to do something else to make our svgs responsive and we will go over that uh, soon in the responsive section so with that we get a viewport coordinate system it's also known as the viewport space its origin is at 0, 0, which is the top left corner of the viewport. Positive x values move horizontally to the right. Positive y values move vertically down. We also get a user coordinate system known as user space. It also has an origin at 0, 0 at the top left corner of the viewport. And in fact, the W3C states that the initial viewport coordinate system and the initial user coordinate system are identical. So uh, you have to remember we have two coordinate systems at play here. Now, if we want to manipulate the user coordinate system, we can use the viewbox attribute. The viewbox attribute will create a new user space, um, also known as the new current coordinate system, the one that's actually being used. And the user space will define exactly what a unit means within the SVG document. So does one mean uh, one pixel? Does it mean five pixels? Uh, does it mean 10 pixels? And so on. So here's an example of using the view box with a width. We have a width attribute with 100. And we have a view box with 0, 0, 200, 200. The 0 and 0 are the minimum x and minimum y of the user coordinate. The 200 and 200 are the width and height. So what we're doing here is we're dividing viewport width by view box width, and we see that one unit is a half a pixel. So you see those bolded sections there. 100 divided by 200 is simply a half. We can also turn this around and have a width of 100. And if we look at the third argument of that view box attribute, we see it's 20. So we'd have a fraction, for example, of 100 over 20, which we all know is 5. So again, the little formula there is viewport width divided by view box width. So the user agent achieves all this using transformations. And it'll do that such that the min x and min y width and height in that view box attribute will map to the bounds of the viewport. So let's uh, get into something a little more concrete with some examples. So here I have a 200 by 200. A height viewport and then the view box is lined up at zero zero and if we look at our rectangle uh, it's specified with a height and width of 50 and sure enough Chrome is telling us that it is 50 50 also the XY coordinates are 10 by 10 everything is lining up as we expect but let's go ahead and drop this down to 100 by 100 and we see that it doubles because 200 divided by 100 uh, or 200 over 100 rather gives us two so it's very simple fractions we're creating again by dividing the view port width by the view box width. And we see that our um, x10, uh, y10 is actually about 20, 20, right? Because the width and height aren't the only thing that scale. The x and y coordinates scale, the stroke scales, 
because the whole coordinate system is scaling. Let's drop that down to 50 and we'll see that our rectangle can't even be contained. It's overflowing because uh, each unit is now 4x, right? Uh, 200 over 50 is, well, 4. We'll learn how to control that behavior later with the preserve aspect ratio, but let's go ahead and set that back to 200 by 200. And then let's go ahead and go in the other direction. Let's make it 800, 800 within height. So now we have 200 over 800, which shows that each pixel is going, or rather each unit is going to be a quarter of a pixel. And if you remember the width and height here at 200, 200 will default to pixels uh, when you don't specify a length unit. So now let's see what's happening here. Well, it should be getting pretty simple for you now. It's now uh, 0.2 or a fifth. Uh, one unit equals a fifth. And you can see the stroke has gotten super tiny. The X, Y coordinate is definitely not uh, 10 pixels in on each side. So hopefully this is demystifying the viewport and view box and how the coordinate systems work. So a lot of times we'll specify 0, 0 and then the natural width and height. But what happens if we specify 20, 20 and let's see how that renders. It will actually move our image up and back over to the left. And what's happening is it's actually going to 2020 in your coordinate system, your user coordinate system, which holds the image, and it's actually moving that back to 00, zero on the viewport. So you can see that it's in 20, uh, 20, and it's moved that to the 00, zero coordinate of that rectangle, which is our viewport. Let's do the opposite and say minus 20, minus 20. That'll actually push it out. Let's go ahead and see how that renders. And you can see that's actually doing what you might have expected on the other one. All right, guys, let's go ahead and pretend that this blue paper here represents our SVG canvas, our infinite dimension, if you will, and that this graph paper in the center is actually our viewport. And here is the zero, zero point in our viewport. Okay. So we automatically get a user coordinate system that would fit flush right on this. So you'd have a duplicate piece of paper if you don't do anything uh, out of the ordinary. Now, if you use a view box and you set it like this, see I've got the width equals some arbitrary number. Let's just say it was 10 and the height was 10. And the view box equals zero, zero. That's saying go to the zero point here on the user coordinate system. So let me take this off. Let's just say that's right there and place that at zero, zero on your viewport. And then let's say that these two guys are equal. So we said 10 and this is 10, the same for the height. In that case, we would go down. Now let's say that we had a rectangle and we said the rectangle was x and y coordinate 8, 8, and it was 8 units tall, 8 units wide. We'd have a situation just like this where we'd go 8 over, 8 down, and we'd have one-to-one -one relationship between the units on the viewport and the units on this paper here. This see-through paper is representing the user coordinate. Now, let's say we do something like this. If we go ahead and scale this up by two. So we've got some arbitrary width here. Let's again say this is 10 and let's say this was 20. Okay, what's gonna happen is when we specify uh, X8 and Y8 in our rectangle, each unit is gonna represent, uh, each unit is going to take up two pixels, like if it was pixels, for example. So you can see this moves out such that we have to move two units on the viewport to equal one unit in our user coordinate system. And that gets us all the way down here. So our X, Y is affected, and so is our width and our height. It's still eight units, um, but it's eight user coordinate units. And because we doubled up on the view box width and the view box height, each unit uh, in our user coordinate system equals two units on our, view on our viewport. 
So that's what's happening here. Nothing else in the specification of this SVG rectangle here would have changed. It's still x8, y8, width equals 8, height equals 8. But because we've changed the aspect ratio using a new user coordinate system here, we now have a bigger rectangle and a bigger distance to our 8, 8 point. So hopefully that helps make it a little more clear. Sometimes you gotta take things out of the digital world and move them into the analog world.